Welcome to this course on introduction to marketing essential and we are talking of module 32. So, we have been talking about module uh, uh, developing new products and services right through module 26 to 32. Now, what we will do what we will do in this module explain how service firms can effectively manage service quality, discuss the service quality model and the 5 gaps, discuss how companies manage self service and lastly we will discuss innovation with services and managing product service bundles. So, let us start with the first one that is managing the service quality. The service quality of a firm is tested at each service encounter. If employees are bored, cannot answer simple questions or are visiting with each other while customers are waiting, customers will think twice about doing business there again. Flawless service delivery is the ideal output by any service organization and for that there are two important activities. The first is managing of customer expectations and the second is to incorporate self-service technologies. So, let us look at the first one that is managing customer expectations. So, customers form service expectations from many sources including past experiences, word of mouth and advertising. In generally, they compare perceived and expected service. If the perceived service falls below the expected service, customers are disappointed. Successful companies add benefits to their offering that not only satisfy customers, but surprise and delight them by exceeding expectations. One company that has built its business around exceeding customer expectations is American Express. American Express embraced a relationship building approach in which customer service reps are judged in part based on the customer feedback. Reps who are called as customer care professionals can see all kind of relevant data on their screen when a customer calls including name, age, address and buying and payment habits. Whether a card member loses a wallet or purse while traveling or need assistance finding a missing child in the foreign country, American Express has empowered the customer care professional to do whatever it takes to help. Now, we will look at this service quality model and the 5 gaps. The service quality model shown in figure 32.1, it identifies 5 gaps that, that can help in the successful del delivery of a high quality service. The first is the gap between customer expectations and management perception. Management does not always correctly perceive what customer wants. For instance, hospital administration may think patient want better food, but patients may be more concerned about nurse responsiveness. The second is the gap between management perception and service quality specifications. Management might correctly perceive customers wants, but not see a uniform performance standard. Hospital administration may tell the nurse to give fast service without specifying speed in minutes. Gap between service quality specifications and service delivery. So, that is the third gap. Employees might be poorly trained. They might be incapable of meeting or unwilling to meet the standard or they may be held to conflicting standards. The fourth gap is the gap between service delivery and external communication. Consumer expectations are affected by statements made by companies, representatives and ads. If a hospital brochure shows a healthy room, but the patient finds it cheap and tacky looking, external communication have distorted the customer expectations. The fifth is the gap between perceived and expected service. The consumers may misperceive the service quality. The physicians may keep visiting the patient to show care, but the patient may interpret this as an indication that something is really wrong. Now, this is the service quality model. It is also it is also called as uh, cervical model. So, you see that in this section we are talking of consumers and in this section we are talking of marketer. So, first is the gap that is the gap between expected service and management perception of customer expectations. Gap 2 is the gap between management perception of customer expectations and translation, translation of perceptions into service quality specifications. Gap 3 is 
the gap between translation of perception into service quality specifications and service delivery that is including pre and post contract. And the gap 4 is the gap between service delivery and external communication to the customer. Now you see there are these two things word of mouth com communication and past experience and personal needs. So they keep on they keep on affecting the expected service. While external communication to the customer also affect expected service. So you see that expected service is being affected by these four things word of mouth, personal need, past experience and uh, external communication to the consumers. Much work has validated the role of expectations in customer interpretation and evaluations of the service encounters and in the relationship they adopt with the firm over time. Consumers are often forward looking in terms of their likely behavior and interactions with the firm when deciding whether to keep or drop a service relationship. Any marketing activity that positively affect current or expected future usage can help to solidify a service relationship. For continuously provided services such as public utilities, healthcare, financial and computing services, insurance and other professionals, memberships or subscription services, customers have been observed to mentally calculate the perceived economic benefit relative to the economic cost. In other words, customers ask themselves, am I using this service enough given what I pay for it? A negative response will lead to a change in behavior and the possible termination of an account. Now, how to manage service quality? So, based on the service quality model we discussed in the previous slides, researchers have identified five determinants of service quality. And these five determinants are first is reliability, the second is responsiveness, the third is assurance, the fourth is empathy and the fifth is tangibles. These determinants are ordered in descending order of importance. So, the first and the most important that is reliability, the ability to perform the promised service dependably and accurately. This involves providing the service as promised, offering dependability in handling customer services problem, performing services right the first time, providing service at the promised time, maintaining error free records and hiring employees who have the knowledge to answer customer questions. The second is responsiveness, the willingness to help customers and provide prompt service. This involves keeping customers informed about when service will be performed, giving prompt service to customers, being willing to help customers and showing readiness to respond to customer requests. The third in importance is assurance, the knowledge and courtesy of employees and their ability to convey trust and confidence. Employees who exhibit assurance instill confidence in customers and are consistently courteous, making customer feel safe in their transactions. The fourth in, imp in importance is empathy, the provision of caring individualized attention to customers. This involves giving customers individual attention, dealing with customers in a caring fashion, having the customer's best interest at heart, understanding the needs of the customers and offering convenient business hours. The fifth is tangibles, that is the appearance of physical facilities, equipment, staff and communication material. Tangibles include modern equipment, attractive facilities, employees with a neat professional appearance and visually appealing material associated with the service. Based on the five factor we discussed. The researcher developed the 21 item cervical scale to measure service quality. In addition, they noted the presence of a zone of tolerance that is shown here, which is a range in which service will be deemed satisfactory, anchored at one end of the minimum level of services that customers are willing to accept and on the at the other hand by the level they believe can and should be delivered. So, this zone of tolerance is lies between these two intervals, adequate service and desired service. So, these are also not point estimate, but, uh, but interval estimates, desired service and adequate service and in between them lies the zone of tolerance. Subsequent research have also extended the service quality model. So, one dynamic process model of service quality is based on premise that customer perceptions 
and expectation of service quality change over time, but that at any given point they are a function of prior expectations about what will and what should happen during the service encounter as well as the actual service delivered during the last contract. Test of the dynamic process model reveals that the two different types of expectations have opposite effects on perceptions of a service quality. Thus, increasing customer expectations of what the firm will deliver can lead to improved perception of the overall service quality. In contrast, decreasing customer expectation of what the firm should deliver can also lead to improved perception of overall service quality. Marketers can also use different measurement to guide the service quality improvement efforts. So, customer defined standards and measures of service quality can be grouped into two broad categories, soft and hard. So, we are talking of different measurement so that we the company can improve its service quality improvement efforts. And these are two broad categories, the hard standards or measures and the soft standard or measures. Now, let us look at what does this soft measure mean. So, soft measure cannot easily be observed and must be collected by talking to customers, employees or others. Soft standards provide direction, guidance and feedback to employees on ways to achieve customer satisfaction and can be qualified by measuring customer perception and belief. Survey query is an example of sophisticated soft measurement system. And then another kind of measures are hard measures. Hard measures and standards in contrast are characteristics and activities can be counted, timed or measured through audits. Such measures might include the number of telephone calls that dropped while customer were on hold, how many orders were filled correctly or the wait time. Hard measures or standards are often set with reference to percentage of occasions on which a particular measure is achieved. The challenge for service marketers is to ensure that operational measures of service quality reflect customer inputs. Another thing that we uh, 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 want to discuss is about managing self-service. So, customers value convenience in service and many person to person service interactions are being replaced by self service technology with an intention to provide convenience. So, now here, here when we are talking of managing self service, now here we are replacing human to human interaction with human and the self service technology. And the whole idea of doing this, this uh, change is to provide convenience to the customer. To traditional vending machines, we can add automated teller machines, self-service at petrol pumps, self-checkout at hotels and a variety of activities on the internet such as ticket purchasing, investment trading and customization of the product. So, now you see we have Sher Khan for investment trading, then we have uh, IRCTC and uh, Bama Lorry etc for ticket purchasing. So, instead of now going to, to a counter and purchasing a, a, a ticket. Now, you can do it yourself sitting at home. So, many service firms are now adopting a self-service model. For example, to streamline its operations and speed up customer service, Chili's installed tabletop computer screen in its restaurants. The customers can now order directly and pay by credit card. The restaurant chain found that users of the service spend more per check in part because they buy more desserts and coffee when the screen is present. And it also reduces lots of uh, lots of uh, uh, shortcomings in order taking and delivery, etc. And another example, open table let customers easily book a dining reservation online. Every company needs to think about improving its service using self-service technologies. Comcast need for customer service has been reduced because 40 percent of its installations are done by the customers and 31 percent of customers now manage their accounts completely online without any kind of human interface. So, therefore, that the chance of human error in this kind of service delivery it is uh, eliminated. Successfully integrating technology into the workforce require a comprehensive re-engineering of the front office to identify what people do best, what machines can do best and how to deploy them separately and together. 
so where to use human where to use machine and where to use both of them together so that is the idea some companies have found that the bigger obstacle is not the technology itself but convincing the customers to use that technology especially for the first time so that we have talked about uh, earlier about the adoption of technology consumers adoption of technology so customers must have a clear sense of their roles in the self service processes must see a clear benefit and must feel they can actually use the technology then self service technology is not for everyone although some automated voice are actually popular with customers many can invoke frustration and even rage at being unable to speak with an actual person now let us see how to go about innovating the services innovation is vital in services new service categories are constantly being introduced to satisfy unmet needs and wants so there is a constant need to come up with new services so that the unmet needs and wants can be satisfied so this unmet needs they are changing the customer wants are changing and therefore there is a need for new services that can satisfy those unmet needs and want and therefore the customers example include dry bar a blow dry saloon concept created around the simple promise of no cuts no color just blow outs for only dollar 40 reddit a giant online digital bulletin board with tens of thousands of active forums where registered users can post content or links and carelinks which functions as a matchmaking site for families with elderly mem- members and non medical caregivers who can provide home care innovation in existing services can also have big payoffs when Ticketmaster introduced interactive seat maps that allowed customers to pick their own seats instead of being given one by a best seat available function the conversion rate from potential to actual buyers increased substantially so now in our airlines also we have this kind of option where you can pick your seats some of the seats are freely available and some uh, and for some you have to pay so the uh, uh, some of them are easily, uh, the freely available and some of them are uh, are paid seats but then still this best seat function is still available and because of uh, because of these kind of seat maps the conversion rate from potential to actual buyer that is inc- that has increased substantially because now customers can make their own choices of the seat the service company that regularly introduce innovation can intrigue customer and stay a step ahead of its competitors and sometimes it can even reinvent a service category now let us look at managing the product service bundles no less important than service industries are product based industries that must provide a service bundle so there are these product based services but they also provide service as a bundle manufacturers of equipments like small appliances office machines tractors mainframe computers airplanes all provide product support services so product support services is becoming a major battleground for competitive advantage how quickly you can provide a product service because everyone ever so that how quickly can you provide a product a, a product support service because everyone wants their equipment to be up and running all the time so in previous modules we understood how product could be augmented with key service differentiation like ordering is delivery installation customer training customer consulting maintenance and repair some equipment companies such as caterpillar tractors and john deere makes a significant percentage of their profits from these services in the global marketplace companies that make a good product but provide poor local service support are at a serious disadvantage so it is important to have a good product one but at the same time it is also important to have a good local service support 
in order to gain a competitive advantage. The quality of customer service departments varies greatly. At one extreme are those that simply transfer customer calls to the appropriate person for action with little follow up. And at the other extreme are departments that are eager to receive customer request, suggestions and even complaints and handle them quickly. Some firms can even proactively con contact customers to provide service after the sale is complete. Manufacturers usually start by running their own parts and service departments. They want to stay close to the equipment and understand its problems. They also find it expensive and time consuming to train others and typically discover that they can make good money from parts and services. So that this part and services as, as a product support service, that is another revenue stream for many companies. If they are the only suppliers and can charge a premium price. In fact, many equipment manufacturers price their equip equipment low and compensate by charging high prices for parts and services. So that is another issue. So you reduce the price of the equipment first, but then charge higher prices for parts and services. Over time, manufacturers switch more maintenance and repair services to authorized distributors and dealers. These intermediaries are closer to customers, operate in more locations and can offer quicker service. Still later, independent service firms emerge and offer a lower price or faster service. So, these services started from manufacturers, they, do, they moved on to the intermediary and then later on some independent service firms, they emerge. A significant percentage of auto service work is now done outside franchised automobile dealership by independent garages and chains such as Midas Mufflers and Jiffy Lube. Independent service organizations handle servers, telecommunication equipment and a variety of other equipment lines. So, for example, air, uh, most of the most most of the equipment and the most of the towers of of Airtel, for example, are being serviced by third party people. Most of their servers, etc., are again serviced by a third party people. Customer service choices are increasingly rapidly, however, and equipment manufacturers increasingly must figure out how to make money on their equipment independent of service contracts. Some new cars warranties now cover. 100,000 miles before customer have to pay for servicing. The increase in disposable or never fail equipment make customer less inclined to pay 2% to 10% of the purchase price every year for service. A company with several hundred laptops, printers and related equipment might find it cheap to have its own service people on site. So in order to conclude this module. Here we have discussed how companies can manage service quality and its two important activities that is managing customer expectations and managing self-service. We have also learned about five gaps identified by the service quality model and the innovation with services today. This also keep in mind that this service quality model is also called as SERQUAL. And we have talked about that uh, this uh, there is a 21 point uh, questionnaire for measuring that service quality. 21 question questionnaire. Finally, we discussed management of product support services and product service bundles. And these are the three books from which the material for this module was taken. Thank you.